Sandra, welcome. Tell us where you're from. I'm from Ipswich in southeast Queensland, Australia, which is just about half an hour outside of Brisbane. And uh, Ruth, we have with us as well. Ruth, where are you uh, zooming in from? I am zooming in from Newcastle in New South Wales, which is just south of Queensland. Thank you both, both for joining us, ladies. Um, so Ruth is actually uh, one of the writers, one of the managers, one of the multi-talented administrators of the Adventist Digital Missionaries uh, Facebook page and uh, group. And Sandra, of course, is very multi-talented and uh, will be able to share with us shortly all of the wonderful things she does. Um, I'll let you guys nut that out. Uh, the purpose of me being here is just to pray for you guys and get you started and then um, I'll hand the chat over to you. Thanks. But today, obviously, we will be discussing um, Facebook Live, um, some of the things that Sandra's been up to on her Facebook Live and, and just what sort of an impact that's having and how that's being a blessing in the world and then how other people can uh, hopefully catch some of that inspiration, some of that fire and be inspired to go and do that as well. Mm. So... Uh, let me have a prayer for you, ladies, and I'll leave you to it. Cool. Father, we thank you for an opportunity to meet with Ruth and Sandra. We thank you for, um, for their availability, for their gifts and talents, and we pray that you'd bless them tonight as they uh, discuss the ways that you've worked in their lives to motivate them, to inspire them, to encourage them uh, to be reaching others through social media and um, using their gifts for you. So, Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for joining us here, and we pray that you'd bless us. Amen. 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 Thanks, Kyle. Thank you. Um, well, I'm really excited to be chatting to you, Sandra. Probably this is officially the second time because the first time was Kyle roping us into a <laughs> to do this all of a sudden. Um, but I'm really excited to have you on board and to have you sharing, um, I guess, what has been maybe it seems like a recent journey for you um, in using Facebook Live to kind of share a little bit of hope or encouragement. Um, tell us about what it is that we're actually highlighting today. So um, you are so right. Facebook Live and me have not been friends for very long. <laughs> Facebook and I have been. Um, and I was so ready to get off Facebook. I, mm. I don't know whether I would have done it because I have so many friends on the other side of the world that I you know, it's the way to keep in touch with people, but I was having this sort of love-hate relationship with it and um, was ready to get off, just do a big Facebook fast, you know, when COVID mm. hit and everything became very necessary online. And I was, I was looking after the church's Facebook page and closed group and um, I was wanting to see if someone else would take over that, you know, it was a privilege to do that and I enjoyed it, but maybe just get off Facebook for a bit. COVID hit and um, I realised, oh, quick stay now, all things on church are very important to have an online presence, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, stayed on Facebook and um, then decided I ought to get it on my phone because I was only accessing it on my laptop and... Mm -hmm. um, okay, got to download this app. And <laughs> that's a new, that's a new thing, getting used to Facebook on the phone rather than having, if I needed to get it on the phone, I could go through Safari, you know, and, and access it that way, but yeah. to actually get used to the app. And then this live feature, <laughs> I had never done a live in my life. So it was all very L plates. I was the learner. <laughs> and um, so what happened and on what we're about to discuss this evening mm -hmm. is that during COVID, I, um, really missed community singing, group singing, harmony, um, sitting at home by yourself and singing a solo. My mother, I actually live with my parents and uh, my mother plays the piano really well, but just sitting at home by yourself and singing piano with mum, you know, singing and having mum at the piano just wasn't meeting the, the need of really, you know, <laughs> harmony singing. Yeah. So when we were allowed to have two people in your home, um, mm -hmm. I knew that my family down the road had a bunch of musical people in the, <laughs> in the home. So I said, I'm coming. <laughs> well, it's a little while afterwards because um, my parents are elderly and in the vulnerable, you know, age bracket. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want the people to come here. You know, our home was a no-go yeah. zone. But yeah. I went to them and eventually and said, I just want to come over for Friday night worship and sing along and just mm -hmm. spend some time music, you know, in music. 
So over I went and oh, I was so excited to be able to sing again. And yeah. um, we decided to just live stream it. So I'd never done a live. It was a lot. It was like, quick, what do we do? And is the thing sideways? Is it, you know, try and work out what it is. Plonk yeah. that thing on the, on the music stand and hope for the best. And, um, and just sang, you know, just sang together. And people started typing in their favourites. And so we're yeah. singing their favourites. And this is, um, this is how it all started. Mm. And uh, obviously, I'm aware of the fact that um, your family is quite musical. You've um, travelled to our camp meeting in North New South Wales and shared musical talents there. Um, you know, there's, there's music that's been released by multiple members of the Entenmann family. Um, and so in Australia, we're kind of more aware of that. But for others that are tuning in from um, overseas, um, yeah, this was for a lot of us, we were like, oh, something familiar for us to tune into. Mm -hmm. And so immediately when you were live streaming this content, the longer the, the video was going for, the more it actually got um, promoted on the news feed. And wow. so I don't know if you can notice my cat's just... Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's going to be weird all night tonight. Um, but basically for us, I just went, oh my goodness. I, I had a moment initially of envy because I didn't grow up in a, um, a singing musical family that had that Friday mm. night experience. Mm. But I immediately also felt um, that I was a part of it. And wow. so that was really special. Um, and I don't know if you guys really recognize that. Yes, it might've been a great family experience for you, but just the amount of lives that I have no doubt were touched by it. Um, has been quite profound. And I think definitely one of the takeaways that I noticed was that um, you could tell that you in the room together as a family were just really enjoying being there. Um, yeah. And oh, the first one was hyperactive plus from me because, you know, you've just been in this lockdown mm. oh, to get back and sing and, and be with family because some of them I hadn't seen, you know, um, I work with some of them and others I hadn't seen. Yeah. So it was just like, oh, I was so excited. I was giggling at the end of every song. I was just like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, I, had, I had eaten something that I'd cracked a lip. So I had one of those nasty cracked lips. And every oh. time you think, ouch. And I'm like, my tongue spent more time outside of my mouth than in my head that night because I'm like, ow, oh, ow. Oh. <laughs> but I was so excited yeah. to be with them. Yeah. Um, and you're right, I did get, I did get the idea very promptly that this wasn't about just meeting a need that I had, you know, mm. this was um, clearly meeting a need that, yeah, a lot of other people are feeling isolated. They're feeling mm. lonely. They're um, living by themselves. They're missing worship music at church or they're missing, you know, mm. community, you know, singing or they, like yourself, they didn't grow up in a, a singing family. And so that was just like, Oh, a chance to sing together with us. So I, I realized very fast, this is, mm. this is not just for me. This is about reaching out. Yeah. And was it, was it, um, I'm trying to remember whether it was live streamed from your own Facebook account or whether it was one of the others. Um, did you originally have it just to be set to like your private, like your friends list or was your intention to immediately go like public and have that shared? I can't actually remember, and I don't remember whether the first one was set to public or just to my friends. Um, that's a good question, but I have turned them all to public since. Yeah. And soon, you know, very soon realised that they need to go public if I didn't make the first one public. Um, but I, I tell you one thing, I have a lot of friends on my Facebook who aren't um, Seventh-day Adventist. Mm. Um, who aren't Christians and who don't share um, my worldview. Yes. So on my Facebook, I have, I steer away from things that are going to, you know, offend and cause unnecessary arguments. I don't want Adventists to come and have big arguments on my wall because I'm keenly aware of, yeah. of, of the, the people that I'm trying to reach. So mm -hmm. to know that even if I was to have a Friday night sing along, that's, um, they're happening to stop past and, and spend a little bit of time with us, if not, you know, the whole time is something that I was really thinking 
this is valuable. This is just valuable to be able to reach them. Whenever else would they come and spend Friday night with us, you know, in worship. Mm. And, um, and so pretty soon on, so yeah, I don't have a public music page or anything like that. I just have my own Facebook profile. So it is just still on there, but, but set to public. And sometimes I've forgotten and set it to friends and then people are madly messaging in. I can't share this. I can't. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Sorry. Never saw those until afterwards. Mm -hmm. But the, the majority of the views and the participation comes after we go live. And that's because we, we here in Australia, um, and you know, New Zealand, this side of the world, we're getting the Sabbath first in other yeah. parts of the world are just waking up or they're still at work, try, you know, getting to the Sabbath. So as the world turns and as the Sabbath comes in, then Adventists are going, this is what I want to just mm -hmm. spend some time with Vespers and sing along. And, but they're sharing it, bless their hearts. They're the ones that are sharing and liking and commenting. And, and I have never asked for anyone to share it. And I've yeah. never asked for anyone to like it or, you know, to help do those things that generate um, numbers. That's not my intention. Mm. Um, but, but if the Holy Spirit impresses people to share because they know that they have people in their networks who would be blessed by that, then that's, you know, praise God, that's what's mm. actually happening. And I am getting the stories back and people are, you know, sharing with me their stories. And it's really encouraging. Yeah, and I just want to touch on that point you made. You said, you know, it's not about the numbers and it's not about um, receiving that, I guess, that sense of popularity. You, you touched on it earlier. You're just enthusiastic to be with your family and to share and be like, oh, there's other people that would love this as well. And so you've really, you know, you've carried that through and I can and see that because of that authenticity and because of you just being like, here I am, it's a Friday night. I want to share with my family. My family's bigger than just my family. And, you know, that, that authenticity, I think, has probably been a main thing that's made this actually really pop, like popular in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, and I would, you know, just from my experience, I was like, oh, this, this, they're so happy to be together. They're so happy to share and to invite people to contribute. And Oftentimes in live videos on Facebook, they're just like, this is a conversation happening between two people or it's a performance or something, but there's not a lot of engagement. Um, so I guess my question was, when did you go from, okay, we're going to put this on Facebook to going, now we're going to take song suggestions from people and just run with it. Was that something that, you know, happened originally or did you move? I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember whether it was instant yeah. Whether that was the plan right that night or whether it was like, we've got our songs we'd love to sing. And if you happen to suggest, I can't remember. I'd have to go back and look. <laughs> but I know <laughs> that. Um, very, it was a good decision, I feel. so. Oh, well, yeah. Holy Spirit must have impressed whichever way mm -hmm. it went and however it started. I can't, yeah, I can't quite remember. But I know that people bless them as they're typing in happy Sabbath and mm -hmm. um they're just starting to share the requests when they realize we're doing maybe a particular era that maybe they haven't heard for a while. And you know yeah. what, Ruth, that might very well be um, part of the, part of the success, should I call it, of that, because the praise and worship phenomena that has swept the globe um, may have left behind, you know, some of the, the, body of Christ who don't identify with the new music yeah. and um, so they're coming to church and they the songs are all chosen for us now so back in the day even just when I was younger there would be a song leader up the front who mm. would um, who would lead the hymns you know the musician the organist the pianist there'd be a song leader leading them the hymns up the front and then they would ask any favourites, any favourites, you know, and the congregation would get to call out, you know, when the role is called up yonder, how great thou art or whatever. And over they turn in their hymnals to that hymn, you know, whereas now we are praise and worship bands who have chosen all the music for the church and we will do it our way. And it might be a song you've never heard before and there's no written music to follow along and, and, and learn it's on a screen so it's hard for the older demographic or the traditional you know conservative demographic to even learn how to sing this song because no one's actually song leading they're just they're up there singing and so in this 
space, I suppose, people are getting to choose their old favourites. You know, they're typing in, their requests are being heard. And, you know, there are new songs as well that people are requesting. And if we know them, mm. we'll do them. Um, yeah. If they're, if they're so new that we don't know them, it's like, oh, help, can't do that one. <laughs> and some people may get a little bit upset. They never do my favourite. But truth mm. is, I haven't always got singers or a musician who know all the songs that people request. And even the younger ones in my family, they don't know all the old hymns. So depending on who I'm with. And it was beautiful, Ruth, that you said that my family isn't just my immediate family. Um, the The... Each Friday night, I'm trying to be with someone different. You know, family one week, someone else the other. Maybe back to the family if they'll let me. Don't want to wear out my welcome there. <laughs> oh, Sandra's coming over every Friday night to send us live all over the world. <laughs> you know, I don't want, that. <laughs> don't want to wear out my welcome. But um, I do have so many musical friends that I've done music with over the years or that I just still engage with that, yeah, if, you don't, if, if we don't know your song this week, we might know it next week. <laughs> yeah. And that's, you just, you know, I think praise and worship as a concept. And, it's, you know, there are some beautifully, um, I wouldn't use the word performed. I would use the word demonstrated acts of worship through, through music that happens in, in modern church experiences. Um, but when it comes to a time when... Uh, pandemics are hitting and there's crises multiple around the world the idea of being able to hear a song that actually speaks to you that is a favorite that gives you hope that is just simply you know broken down unplugged and people on the other side of the world are singing it and encouraging you to tune in yeah that that's the type of experience that we want to be sharing online and you were speaking you were saying i was set to go on a social media fast in fact, just before COVID hit, I went on off the internet for, I think it was about three weeks. And oh. I felt like it definitely wasn't long enough. Right. Yeah. But um, I realized that, yeah, if my church was going to be shut down immediately, I kind of needed to have some connection. Um, I needed to connect in with my friends that had no idea what was going on in yeah. the world yeah. in a spiritual sense where God had given me this. And I was thinking, well, to be hush hush and to just go offline at a time like this is kind of ridiculous and so on the flip side of that there's such an information overload that to break people's news feeds with music mm. is such a refreshing thing and I think you know we talk a lot about the different evangelistic series that have been happening and um, you know different initiatives and it's just all about trying to figure out well there's also time for praise and there's also time for petition and there's also time yeah. for um, community and um, I, yeah I just have to hand it to you. you guys have really shown such a beautiful example of that um, wow. and I know it's you know as you said it was out of feeling like I just want to be with my family and like sing but by following a pure desire like that I feel as though that's actually really impacted others you know in wow. a positive sense as well yeah um, I'm, I'm certainly one that believes you can't sing your life away. You just can't spend your whole life singing. There's other stuff to be done and there's active evangelism to be done, you know, and um, praise God, um, I'm involved in a church that we were able to get an evangelistic effort going, you know, 12, 11, 12 weeks ago. I'm mm. on Monday and Tuesday nights online as well. So that those nights keep me busy, you know, on online. Brayden's actually the speaker, my nephew. Mm. He's the speaker for that. But, um, and we've got, you know, excitement with that, seeing people who aren't from our faith and from our church coming in. And, but, but yeah, Friday night, just opening the Sabbath, you know, and then spending time in singing God's praises mm. and, um, and joining with people all over the world is just really special. It's so special. There's been like, um, not that I'm counting, <laughs> there's been like people from um, 70 plus countries joining in and 
you know, I wasn't asking people to say where, where they're from, but recently I was like, yeah, actually I will, you know, I will mm-hmm. share with us where you're from because I could see that people were coming on and it wasn't just about asking us, can you sing this song or happy Sabbath Sandra and team? They're starting to say happy Sabbath to each other. They're starting to reach out to each other and befriend each other. And I know who the participants are who are not Adventist, um, you, you know, from my Facebook. Mm-hmm. I know the ones who are backslidden Adventists. I know the ones who just have really no relationship with Christ and are okay with that, but they're watching and then people are reaching out to them. And I said, wow, thank you, Lord, you know, that you get to work through a multitude of people really to Mm. to bless each other. So, um, yeah, so as I've, as I've gleaned through song titles, every now and then I'll get some spare time and I'll hunt through the song titles because people suggest songs that I haven't thought about in years. So I'm getting this big arsenal of song titles for any future camp meetings or conferences that we do worship music for. And um, I've seen these, these countries that people are, are listing. And so, yes, yeah, 70 plus different countries. And a lot of them are in the 1040 window, which is so exciting. Mm. So for, for those of you here in this um, webinar, um, you all probably are very familiar with that 1040 window is because you're intentional about discipleship and evangelism. But um, to think that these countries, that, that's Islam, that's Hinduism, that's Buddhism, and that's non-religion, you know, permeating those spaces. And here these people are tuning in from those areas. Um, and they may be Adventists just working the area or living the area, but then they are the ones, you know, also sharing and who knows who's in their feeds, you know, in their in their groups and in their spheres of influence that um, others are just able to tune in. And one thing, Ruth, that I I soon learned in the first few that I needed to be intentional about this hour, or sometimes it's an hour and a half that we end up singing. It's not just to sing, 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 and call out happy Sabbath to everyone who says happy Sabbath to us, but mm. also to take the time to explain what the Sabbath is. Mm, um, yeah because yeah a lot of people yep. will be tuning in like what's this happy sabbath business what are they on i had one school friend from years back oh okay darn it happy sabbath he types you know and um <laughs> you know on a few of the evenings just to explain what this is who we are and why we say happy sabbath and share with them that fourth commandment and share with them what sabbath keeping looks like in the average sabbath keeping household and and what a blessing it is and so mm-hmm. you know i may be only planting a seed in those times I may be watering a seed or who knows, it may be, you know, nearer to the harvest in a person's life where they're just ready to get back to God. You'd never know. Yeah, I was just going to say the person that you said, an old school friend being like, oh, happy Sabbath. I feel like that's some harvesting going on. (laughs) It's like, once you said it, you're in it for life, man. Like, (laughs) Well, interestingly, when I was in high school, that was many moons ago, um, my... I was the school captain at my school. It was a state school. And yeah. my senior formal or senior prom, as the Americans would call it, was on a Friday night. Mm. And it was it was changed over to another night to, for, so that I could come, but then it was all rigged and changed back the other night to get some venue. Oh. And everyone was so mad. And I was like, no, don't be mad. If you're going to be mad, be mad at me because I'm not coming. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, what? and I know that was a big impact on the students at the time that I would never go anywhere on a Friday night or on a Sabbath, you know, and... Um, missed out on my own formal, you know, because I would rather go spend time with Jesus. And my school friends are just like, oh, Sandra, I'm sure if I was Jesus, I'd be like, you you spent every Friday night with me for all your life. You have this night off. <laughs> just like, it work that way. <laughs> so to know that, you know, if no, if this wasn't a public thing and it wasn't going around the globe and it was just for my friends who mm. I still have, you know, all on my Facebook because I've organised school reunions and things like that, then then this is still just replanting in their minds that that's right, this girl has a commitment to God that she will Mm. not back down on, you know. So I'm so grateful just for that little opportunity in and of itself. I think that's a really good point. And you've mentioned it a couple of times here and there about how you're very mindful of your Facebook audience. I mean, the, the fact is that now they go public. So basically, if that's the case, anyone can see it. But your intentional friends list who would see it first come up on their newsfeed yeah. is such an eclectic mix of people. Yeah. Um, and so obviously we don't, 
there's this fine kind of balance sometimes. And as you mentioned, it's very much, it has to be Holy Spirit led in how we, we know when to post and what to post, you know, when to speak and when to be quiet and that kind of thing. And um, the challenge to people this week was to see how they can um, extend the Sabbath to the stranger within their gates. Mm. Um, and I know in, in Exodus 20, it talks about this idea of, you know, you shouldn't work, nor your wife, nor your children, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor the stranger within your gates. And I was like, well, stranger within our gates is a bit, um, there's kind of like a global village no yeah. end right now. <laughs> right. And so how are we encouraging people to just take time from the hustle, the, the work mentality and to step into that space and definitely having a family together singing is such a hang on what's going on this is so unusual thing that catches their attention but would you would you say there's um there's some uncertainty or um sometimes you're not sure how much to share or what to avoid talking about in these i mean it's generally it's singing as you said but you do also talk about the Sabbath or? Yeah, no, there's not been any unsurety in that kind of stuff because I don't get a chance to talk as much because people are just madly typing in their requests and you don't want to look like you're yeah. ignoring them to share some, you know. Um, yeah. I, I stop every now and then and, and just intentionally talk to the camera, you know, rather mm. than be reading what they're saying while I'm trying to sing and trying to, you know. So mm. sometimes I miss, well, a lot of the times I'm missing the requests yeah. just to actually have a little chat with them about something. But for the most part, I'm trying to trying to weed through their songs to see which would which songs would suit the style of the musician and the singers that we have, the, the age mm -hmm. range. What do we know? Um, and then just as the Holy Spirit leads, just to share whatever you yeah. know is related to that song or to that person. Some people have typed in, you know, that they've been diagnosed COVID nineteen positive. Oh. You know, so oh. please, you know, pray. So we'll just stop in the middle of the the session and just let's just pray right now for that situation you know mm -hmm. and um and then you know move on and, and sing again um yeah one of my friends is a chaplain in a hospital and he's just seven of his patients have just died of covid mm -hmm. and he's the one who's having to help that person decide which family member they are going to have near them because they're not only allowed, you know, all this kind of, and he just is being ministered to by the, the sing-alongs just because he's in such a draining line of work. Another girl that tunes in is a little bit of a backstory on this one. Mm. Um, we'll call her Jen because that's actually her name, but her online name is different. 10 or 11 years ago, Jen um, reached out to me. She was a cutter. She was self-harming mm. and, um, Whilst she was cutting, she was channel flipping and she came across 3ABN and they were airing one of my songs at that time and it arrested wow. her attention. She stopped, she listened and never cut since. Wow. So I don't know how long afterwards she managed to reach out to me, find me on Facebook or through 3ABN or I can't remember what it was, but she emailed me to tell me that. And I've sort of kept in touch with her on and off throughout the years and she's had a lot of trauma in her life and um but she's been tuning into these sing-alongs singing along and she's reaching out now to a neighbor who's actually um attending the church of satan and um she's being told just no don't go there it's too hard it's you know and she's in but who's gonna reach her she tells me who's gonna reach her you know and so we're praying together through this that she'll be able to reach her friend and whilst her friend is you know very much doing the church of satan thing her friend likes music so she's getting her friend to listen to the sing-alongs you know and it's like you'd never know how you might be able to mm. impact someone and just this week this dear girl has gone from three pack of cigarettes a day to zero she's on day five smoke and caffeine free just wow. this week she's listening to those sing-alongs over she's gone from one to nine to how many there are she's just listening to them over and over and learning all the songs so that she won't smoke she goes she can't sing and smoke at the same time yeah. <laughs> bless her heart yeah and that's you've made such a beautiful point right there's there's so much negativity and there's so much things that are distracting us it's kind of good to reverse the game a little bit and put a positive distraction as you said, from smoking, but something that's actually 
that's spirit filled and that has you know verses in the word of god just yeah. pregnant in it and to um you know so many everybody knows the song amazing grace for instance like no matter who you are there's videos of people a gentleman in the uk with a loudspeaker and he's like hey i don't know if you're christian or not but I'm, you know, I'm a pastor um, in the church. And since no one's coming to me, I thought I'd come to you guys. If you want to sing along, sing along. And he had this whole um, mm. street just standing on, you know, the edges of their doors and just singing along. And um, in a sense, we're doing that as well. We're inviting people to tune into something that they don't have to be weird about yeah. showing up to a church. In fact, churches literally come right into their hands, into their... Um, living rooms and into places like that yeah incredible incredible I think that you know a lot of us a lot of people are aware that number one okay we've got a health concern here hence we're all you know isolated but number two the devil is very hard very busy trying to keep God's people from being able to to gather to draw strength and encourage you know one another and yet um He's not winning because now the body of Christ is able to expand, you know, and reach into places that we otherwise never were getting and into homes and hearts, you know, in the privacy of their own home. And so these you digital missionaries, digital disciples, what are you, digital disciples? <laughs> digital missionaries. Yep. <laughs> you know, you know your work is valuable. It's so needed, whatever skill sets you have that God is, you know, has entrusted you with and that you're able to just take that and use it and get into people's homes, get into their place where their, their, their walls are not up. Um, that's just so exciting. Yeah. There's a couple of questions here in our question and answers. Hmm. And um, there's one, somebody's asked whether you're going to sing a verse and chorus of your favourite song for us. <laughs> We were talking about this earlier, thinking, oh, can we have a backing track? Or, I mean, I, I would love to sing along, but there's, a, there's always we tends to be a sing along a track. <laughs> You'd be singing something, and it's like people trying to sing happy birthday over the internet and stopping and starting at different times. Um, but, you know, this person said, by the way, I love this idea. I do poetry, and I think I'm going to go live with my pieces. What do you think oh, of that, idea, Sandra? I do think that's a great idea. How come I can't see these questions? Or are they there? Okay, well, I'm just... How, are you muted now? Oh, sorry. On the bottom of your screen, there's like a little Q&A with a three. Oh, Q&A. Okay, so yeah. I participate in Zoom meetings, but I've never run one. I just participate in them. <laughs> so, um, while Alicia... You're, while you're checking that, I'm just going to let my cat out because he's going absolutely bonkers. Go for it. Alicia? You. <laughs> no worries. Alicia, I think that's an awesome idea. And I, I must admit that in the middle of one of the sing-alongs, I think someone chose the hymn Day by Day. And right after we sang it or right before we sang it, I just went, ah, oh, and immediately thought of my all-time favourite poem in the world called The Best Day of My Life. And immediately I was just like, wait, and I'm pulling it up on my laptop. And I just took the time to read through that poem and share that poem with with the viewers before we sang that hymn day by day. Um, and yeah, poetry like songs, like music lyrics can have a way of really penetrating the heart and the mind where having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone and trying to get them to realize the importance of accepting Christ into their life and seeing themselves as a sinner and in need of a mm. savior you know, is, is not as easy. Um, and because it's your own work and it's your own um, you know, people will be very encouraging and, and supportive knowing that you're sharing your gifts that God's given you. And who knows how many people you may reach with your poems. So I would definitely yeah. encourage you to do that. Yeah. You know, um, here's another question. Uh, is it appropriate oh, yeah. to have a live prayers and petitions on Facebook? I want to answer this one with a, I think so. If, if you believe that the audience that you have on your Facebook um, and that's something to kind of I want to suggest this to people all the time is actually go through your Facebook list and maybe create just like a um, like a little template like a document or a Google sheet or something and you just you actually actually document 
this person, they identify as Adventist or this person doesn't, this person's a Christian, this person's not, this, you know, definitely atheist or kind of antagonistic towards faith. And so you actually know really who is the people, who your neighbours are essentially, because they're not just like friends on Facebook, they're neighbours. And so to answer this question, I think that once you know who it is that's tuning in, then you know whether that's appropriate or not. I always think that having the opportunity for people to say, yes, I want to, I want you to pray for this and to model this kind of um, interaction is a beautiful thing to do online, just mm-hmm. as you, Sandra, have modeled just praise and worship time as well. Yeah, um, I'd have to agree with, I'd have to agree with Ruth on that. Um, if people are asking for prayer, you know, please pray for me. I've, I've been in testing positive. Um, then to say to them, yeah, I'll pray for you. The chances of remembering later are always going to be slim. When, and even that's in life as well, not just online. You know, when, when we um, agree to pray for people, unless you've got a smartphone right with you, which we always do, but, you know, unless you bring that in your prayer list immediately in your notes section, um, your, your chances of remembering people in their situations can be slim. So to pause and to stop and to pray with them right in that moment, um, I think is has it's the way I do it and it's Mm -hmm. I think it's a beautiful thing for them and um online is very much like face-to-face really because we're engaging in real time and Mm -hmm. yeah the rebroadcast as it's watched later and later and later that's not real time but it was a real time experience you know when that person typed their request in and the fact that we're this global family and we've got these extras that are with us you know, then it's not just Adventists. We've got these extras who are watching in and, and seeing and observing. And that was the one thing I really was grateful for, that whilst we've had to shut our doors at church and, and close up shop as it were, we now are at having this capacity to put our content online so that our neighbor, our neighbourhood around our churches can watch and see, so what do those Adventists do? What are they up to on a Sabbath morning? So to be really intentional when we do our Sabbath schools and our worship services and our, you know, Bible studies, to be intentional knowing that there may be other people watching and mm. to engage personally with those viewers, I think um, is, is a nice thing to do and enables mm. them to engage in prayer when otherwise they may not have. Yeah, I was just thinking when you said, um, I mean, for the sake of forgetfulness, it's good to stop immediately and pray with people. Mm. Definitely agree with that. But also just the touching experience when somebody goes, hey, somebody just stopped whatever they were doing to ask the God that they believe in to take care of me. Yeah, That shows that they are prioritized by you and that you're extending that love that God himself has for them. Mm. Um, and so the long answer to that question is definitely yes. Um, of course, you know, if you had a reason why we shouldn't, I'm always listening and open yeah. to, you know, that, and that's the beautiful like, thing. Is- yeah, so I was going to say, sometimes, you know, just being mindful of, is this going to attract a whole lot of, as you said, dissension? Or is this going to attract, um, you know, based on the, the topics or the things that are being brought up in discussion? And so that's just what we want to be mindful of in, yeah. um, you know, you do sometimes have those people that don't really get what you're trying to do online and sometimes will... I haven't noticed it yet on yours, but sometimes they try to start up a conversation and then switch into, you know, fourth gear all of a sudden and go down the conspiracy route or whatever it might be, or they want to bring up something which is all well and good, but not the focus of your post. Um, And so when you're running these live um, praise and worship or live prayer and petition, it's just to be mindful to have somebody moderating. It's quite a wise thing, I would say. Yeah. yeah, we ain't got no moderator in mine. <laughs> but yeah, in, in the things where you're more, um, the other types of online ministries, that's, that's yeah. very wise. Well, you're reading, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And we do, when we're doing evangelism, you know, in our church, um, we, we're doing that as well and, and prayer support throughout. We're just too busy singing on our... <laughs> <laughs> trying to read and remember words as well at the same time, read song titles. <laughs> But you're creating an example of what other families can do as well, which is really beautiful. Um, And so we've got a couple of other people here that have said, um, one is how important is it to go live with song and praise regularly every sundown or every Friday sundown to empathize the 
emphasize, sorry, <laughs> it's late, the importance of beginning of Sabbath hours in our local time zone. Is it, I guess the crux of that is, is it important to do this, dare I say, religiously and, you know, with, with structure and order? Um, if you want to, it's working for me because I don't get to go to church and sing with everyone. So Friday night's my <laughs> Sabbath highlight now um, to be able to, and usually I'm organizing it Friday morning or Thursday night if I'm lucky, you know, to like, okay, who's available? Who am I singing with tomorrow night? You know? Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm certainly the blessed one for it. Um, but now that I realize how many other people are actually wanting this and they're asking, would we please continue to do this post COVID restrictions? Mm. And when those requests were coming through, my initial response, and I, I didn't say any, but my initial reaction, should I say, is I don't know that I can say, sustain this long term because once you get back to church, let's say church gets back to some sort of normality. Mm. Friday nights is a busy night. You know, you're busy going over the lesson you have to teach the next day. You're busy preparing big church programs, you know. And Friday night, like, oh, I can't guarantee. But the more I think about it, all of a sudden I've realised, no, this, this is important and this is something I can sustain. And mm. if I space this out and not use my family every week, if I rely on different <laughs> friends, you know, share the load, I can do it. I can mm. do this. And you're right. That's a really good point. It, sh it shows continuity. It shows this is a, this is a ritual. You know, this is a, mm. a practice in my life that Friday night worship is something that I've certainly grown up with. And, mm. um, and so to our friends with very different worldviews to then be having this con consistently coming into their feed, they can, they can skip past it if they're not interested, no mm. stress, but, um, for the people who are needing that and you know the the friends who might just be very isolated and not sensing their need of god but going through hard times and then hearing amazing grace how sweet the sound mm. you know that saved a wretch like me you never know when a particular song lyric that they hover over the screen for three seconds you know um if they they're getting to know, and that's, I suppose, why the views are now growing, because people are getting to know that's the time that it's on. They're sharing it with friends who are hurting, and they're saying, tune in, you're going to be blessed. Mm. You know, um, I will try and keep this up for the long term. And, of course, mm. there may be nights when I can't for whatever reason, and I won't beat up on myself. I'll just tell everyone, you can go and watch one of the old ones tonight. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> Couldn't find any friends. <laughs> <laughs> to sing with because if I just did it by myself we would not have the views I just know it it would be really boring because any one of us could just sing a song for, for an hour sing songs for an hour and that probably wouldn't retain anyone to make sure that there was harmonies and and competent musicians who know a wide variety of music mm. because the requests that are coming in are from you know 100 years ago up to like this year you know different mm. eras of music um that's I know that's part of the key of mm -hmm. of making people feel like yeah they want to be a part of it they're not just hearing their voice and my voice on a screen they're hearing community singing and they're seeing real-time organic natural engagement as cracked as it might be because I'm pretty crazy um <laughs> I I'm, I'm a sanguine crazy you know happy crazy girl but when it comes to ministry and music ministry I take that very seriously mm -hmm. but Friday night sing along is just happy happy joy joy I'm so excited to be singing <laughs> <laughs> so if it brings a ray of sunshine into other people's hearts and homes and buoys their spirits and encourages them then I'm I'm blessed to be a blessing I think it's um you know we're saying people aren't going to physical church buildings for um, right right now, necessarily. I mean, some churches are starting to gather together. Australia is one of those places that's very blessed to have um, limitations on how many people can be in church and the social distancing, but church doors are opening. Um, yeah. But I, there's so many movies that you see, and this is a pop culture thing, which definitely, I believe, instilled in my mind, um, just like a really quick testimony. So a few years ago, I wasn't a Christian. I'd left, um, I wasn't, I ceased to be an Adventist or a Christian at around 16. And when I uh, had this kind of whirlwind kind of experience where I was like, I need to pursue my faith, 
I knew exactly where the church was um, because it was in the same place. Um, it was, you know, in my, my daily walk, walk straight past it. And I always used to go, huh, I wonder what it would be like to go to an Adventist church. It's been like, you know, eight, 10 years. And in a sense, as soon as you said that you were doing it kind of consistently, people know what time to tune in. It's almost as though what you're providing, um, you know, you see it as just music and singing, but to humanity, it's a service in a sense. And mm -hmm. um, it is the, the, um, it's the open door of a church when people finally go, you know, they've seen it in the movies, they've run out of hope. They're able to go to a place that they know is always present at a certain place at a certain time. Um, and to anybody thinking of starting something like this, if you have that consistency that Sandra's talking about, it allows people to go, oh, I know that I'm going to see a familiar face at this time in this place on the internet. Um, and when they're ready, they'll step through those doors. Um, yeah. So we just need to kind of keep them open, I guess. That's such a good point. Mm. Yeah. I see um, one here. Um, yeah, I'm not looking at the Q&A, so you take care of the q and A. I'm seeing one just in the chat section that I just need to read because I can't, I can read and sing at the same time, but I can't listen to you and read at the same time. It says, if you know what is known as mission spiral or the steps of Jesus method, where do you see yourself? Do you try to only cover one step or do you also try to cover all of them? I'm not Jesus aware method. of this. So, uh, the, well, I, I'm I mean, I don't know Christ's method alone. I don't know if that's yeah, the same. Thing. Yeah, if that's what you're referring to, of, of ministering to people's needs, um, that he would do that and then he'd bid them follow him. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose we're meeting a need right now because if COVID never happened, I wouldn't have thought to do this because mm -hmm. I have an active music ministry in um, face to face, you know, um, so I get my fix for music and harmony, you know, in in that capacity. But because of the restrictions, you know, I said it earlier. I was just I was missing singing, so I wanted to do it for me. And then thought, hey, let's let's see who else we can minister to. Mm. So I suppose I'm covering the the step of meeting their needs, but I'm really wanting to make sure that we do invite people to follow. Christ as well, if that's what you're referring to. Um, and so I've now sort of got this little structure of, we pick a first couple of songs just to warm up. You know, I've seen a lot of lives where people don't do anything much in the first minute. They're just like waiting for people to come on, waiting for people to come on, and they'll be busy just until they can see they've got an audience. Whereas I'm like, no, because the majority of people that watch a live are watching it later. They don't want to sit around yeah. for a minute while you fuddle. So we just get in, welcome in everyone, and um, and start singing some songs that we know and love. So I generally get to Gary's a few minutes beforehand, I'm like, right, what we got? <laughs> what songs, you know? And and just sing a couple of our songs before all the requests start coming in. We'll sing the requests for the, the hour. And then at the end, I'll just um, let them know that we're about to close, but we're gonna have a prayer first. So pray together and pray for the viewers. We, we Before we go live, we pray. We just really pray for everyone who's going to tune in because God knows who they are. God knows what their needs are. God knows what songs are going to be best for the needs of all these people. I have no idea what each of them are going through. And of course, all these people who are typing in requests, we can't do them all. There's no way we can do them all, but God impress us to choose the right ones for the people who are tuning in. And um, so, yeah, at the end, we generally now will then just have a word of prayer, pray for those viewers, um, really intentionally about that and then sing another one or two songs that we can let them farewell each other um, as we sing those last because we found we were just like see ya out and then they're still typing like oh they, oh you know we didn't get it so it gives them a chance to say goodbye to one another and um, yeah I don't know whether I've really answered your question but I hope I can only hope that I'm meeting a couple of steps there of giving people an opportunity to um, know Christ as well as just have some needs met of, of feeling together and connected. I actually have a really um, something to add with that. So we are I'm throwing out just some self-promotion. Um, not really. So 
the young adults of or a number of young adults in north new south wales um which is the conference that i'm a part of we mm -hmm. ran something called big camp online so as soon as we found out that our camp meeting for the year was cancelled um we were like well hang on like we we're gonna have like an amazing speech speaker come over <laughs> and we're all kind of devastated so we met for dinner and this is before lockdown was happening and we we're like well we still want to go ahead with this just Ellen White uh, she initially spoke about this idea of um you know camp meetings being to to be situated in the cities and so we we're like well online yeah. is the city right this is where people are meeting this is where they need the ministry and kind of your your analogy of people kind of watching from the outside so I imagine this like dark outside and these like well-lit massive canvas tents and people kind of peering in right um and we did this and you know we had such an eclectic group of people we had obviously the speakers we had musicians they're all you know on the screen itself and then there was a group of us actually messaging and staying in contact and just simply interacting on our own private you know personal facebook accounts to the comments that were going on mm. um, and so this is kind of a way in looking at that question of, you know, how do we bid people to follow Christ or how do we make, you know, a step sometimes even having a couple of extra people as part of your ministry team, if you decide this is something you want to do, um, it could be that you have a couple of friends that you go, Hey, like, do you mind tuning in tonight? And just if anybody is, you know, reaching out or needs encouragement. Um, we had one lady that had just, I believe escaped from a domestic violence, and so we were able to engage with her and encourage her and, and connect up with her um, or have, have a, you know, a believer connect up with her in the real life. And um, thanks to the beautiful network of the Adventist Church. Wow. Um, and so, yeah, I would encourage, you know, sometimes it's not going to be you as a singer or you as, you know, the piano player that's able to do that. But you've created a space immediately where other people can come in and actually be the people that say, are responding to the needs or being hey like do you mind if we private message because yeah. i think i have something that will encourage you or um hey like here's my my facebook account add me if you want to and we can we can chat further um and people that are willing and able to do that so that it, you know yes jesus was doing so many things and he said we would do things you know even more things but sometimes as well as humans i think it's important to go I'm not going to be able to see this through from, you know, A to B, from, from seed to harvest necessarily, yeah. but we're yeah. all this body and we're all able to effectively do that as well. That's such a good point. That is such a good point. And to remember that each one of us with our different skill sets bring, you know, into these people's lives, you know, that it's, it's very valuable that they don't just have you taking them from, a to Z, you know, or by yourself, because they're only getting your flavor. They're only getting your uh, style of uh, evangelism, your interpretation of stuff. You know, it's very healthy that they have different ones watering, planting, you know, harvesting, um, that they get a full comprehensive view of what the body of Christ can really look like, you know, that we all bring something to the table and we all get to contribute and not to be sour on different ones because of their skill sets and, and that ours don't meet theirs no god's given you your gifts and he's given them their gifts and he's given me my gifts what he expects us to do is use those for his glory and use those to help further his kingdom not to be concerned about someone else and their gifts you know if we're just diligent in what he's entrusted us with in using it to help um, people know him then that's how we can be a blessing in the world, hey? Yeah, absolutely. There's a quick question here, and um, and then I think we'll just wrap up with, uh, I guess, you know, where people can be inspired by some of your videos and um, some last minute um, suggestions. Christina from Sri Lanka says that she's thinking of taking this idea of a Friday night sing along to her youth group. Awesome. Um, how long do you think each session should be? Will one hour be too long? should we include a devotional? I think you've kind of touched on these, but just to, I don't yeah, think that one should do this all, but yeah. Mm -hmm. um, if I suppose, you know, to be brutally honest, if, if it's poorly done, one hour could be torture, you know? If it's, if it's <laughs> done well, one hour may not be enough, you know? And I know that um, an hour goes past very fast 
for mm. us, you know, and each time I introduce a new musician or singer to come and be a part, they're just like, oh, that went so quick, you know, and, and really it does. You only, if, you, if you're doing full hymns, we're only getting maybe 12 to 14, you know, songs in the hour. If you're doing little choruses that are over and done with, you know, like that, you're getting like 20, 25, 30 songs in the hour. But um, you, will in, you will be able to guess by the amount of people that are asking for more and, and requesting more songs in those live mm -hmm. situations. If, um, if people are wanting more, then, then do it for them, you know? And, and our, because we start at 8 p.m., which is 6 a.m. US time, and I chose 8 p.m. because um, generally people have exhaled by then. They've come home, they've opened the Sabbath, they've fed the kids, they've gotten to bed, and they're just like, oh, now they're down. And a lot of people are then, you know, on their devices rather than in their Bibles, <laughs> you know, but it's just a nice, <laughs> a relaxing time. You know it's the truth. So, um, but to go past nine, you know, a lot of people are like, I've got to go to bed now. And, and my own family are like, my sister-in-law's like, okay, bedtime. <laughs> so I thought an hour is, I think it less is more. You know, if they're wanting more, that's a good thing rather than, well, this thing ever stop. You know, I don't want to leave because I don't want to miss out, but really I'm tired. So an hour has worked well for us, but yeah. um, we tend to go over a little bit. So I say, yeah, if you have, if you have good harmonies and, um, you know, competent musicians, um, an hour is working fine. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I just want to thank you so much for sharing. I, originally, we were like, oh, we'll go for 30, 45 minutes. And I know you were like, oh, I'll have no trouble, you know, talking. <laughs> and neither yeah. do I. So, <laughs> um, well, but, Sonia, thank you. Sonia's just said, this is so interesting. I'm praying yeah. for God to guide me as to what I can do. Sonia, God is so going to answer that prayer. Yeah. He is definitely going um, to answer that prayer. And then Alicia's met, mentioned, have an awesome day, everyone. Remember, we are God's ambassadors. Let's represent. Um, and that's what this is. All of this is about, essentially, digital missionaries, digital discipleships, allowing, um, you know, God to work in our lives in such a way to do this. Um, hey, yeah, we're just one thing. shout out, shout out. Um, one of the digital missionaries here in the, in the room is actually my guitarist. Joe Tyler he's in New Zealand and he's up late watching with us so he hasn't been a part of any of these because he's been stuck in Adam is a panelist right now <laughs> <laughs> so welcome Sandra <laughs> Sandra where can people go if they want to um, if they want to see what you do to see what they can do where can people find this stuff so um, yeah it's all just on my personal page so my surname, I'm Sandra. My surname is spelled Enter Man, M A W N E N T E R M A W N. Now, just let's for the record, all of those things are set to public, as we said. And when you start this kind of a thing, and if it does gain the level of interest that these videos have, then of course you start getting bombarded with a whole bunch of friend requests. Mm. And then you look like you're rude because you're not adding everyone. So there's there's a kind of a downside mm. that you, I can't add everyone. You know, I'm, I was just going to mention that <laughs> I'm struggling. I'm struggling yeah. to keep up with the friends and family that I have that I want to keep in touch with, and I'm trying. I've got friends. I've got family in my own immediate family and nieces and nephews and great who who need Jesus, and I'm not even mm. making time enough for them. So to start adding a bunch of people that I don't personally know would be counter productive for me so it's hard because people are trying to add you they just feel like they're, they're getting to know you and they want to be you know your friend and um, I just make sure I'm really intentional about looking that camera in the eye so I'm looking the audience in the eye and and engaging with them in that space rather than trying to add a bunch of people on Facebook so mm -hmm. please don't be offended if you come and try and add me and I don't add you <laughs> but I, you can I have noticed that, that you um... follow it you also reply to my comments. So I was sitting with my Nana and my Nana wanted a song and then you responded to my comment, but I've seen that on some of them, there's like seven, 800 comments. So do you actually sit there and then go through those comments or do you just do it like on the night? No. So on the night, it's impossible to type back. So we just, we're just engaging verbally with them. Um, but some of those really garnered a lot of comments later, you know, people were still typing in because 
a lot of us, let's face it, it's, it's all new to a lot of us, all of these platforms. And a lot of people just see, oh, live. And they see the comments coming in and they see me responding. So they just think it's live still. They don't realize it was like four days ago. So a lot of them, the whole week later, people are still requesting their favorites and requesting them again and requesting them 10 times. And, and you, you just feel like, oh, I would be rude to not respond because they don't understand that it's not still live. So then I find I flick back and, and like and comment and answer questions and let people know that this was actually live three days ago. So people are starting to catch on now and they're not still trying to request all week. You know, they're, they're getting the hint. So, yeah, you can just go to my page, Sandra Interman, and, and if you... You can follow it, you know, and that yeah. way you'll those I was websites. going to mention that there's, there is an option on Sandra's page um, I'm pretty sure I switched it off on my page because I felt weird that people would follow me. This was years ago, but now I see it as a really useful <laughs> tool to not have people on your friend, you know, your friends list necessarily, because as you said, we just don't have the bandwidth to, you know, I mean, Jesus himself. Right. And so in that sense, I'm not saying, you know, whittle down your Facebook you know, friends list to 12, but this idea of really reaching out those that are nearest and dearest to us so that we can have that ongoing effect. But mm. you do have this follow option on your Facebook page, which will allow people, if they are wanting to tune into these for every Friday, to have maybe, that come up on their news feed. Maybe I didn't know that you could not have that as an option. <laughs> There's so much about Facebook that I just didn't no. So yeah. next thing I'm seeing all these following people following, I'm like trying to work out what is this? Oh, so they're the people I haven't <laughs> accepted. <laughs> I think awesome. I've worked that out now. <laughs> <laughs> I love people. Everyone is just a friend I haven't met yet. I really do love mm -hmm. humans, but I just realized that, yeah, you cannot, it's not, it's not possible to connect with all the people all the time and, and be in ministry mode in that platform, that's never going to happen. You get distracted and it goes crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm figuring that out at the moment. So <laughs> um, it has been so wonderful. Um, and, you know, like you mentioned we could go on forever and I kind of want to, but at the same time, um, recognize that it's 9.03 PM here and um, my cat kept me awake last night. So I'm going to be getting a pretty <laughs> Good amount of sleep tonight. Um, but it was just, yeah, so, so beautiful to talk with you. Um, I know that a lot of people that have tuned in this evening or this morning or wherever and whenever they are um, tuning in from, um, they've been really blessed by what you've shared. And mm -hmm. I'm just hoping and praying that, um, yeah, it inspires some people to start up, not just to tune in with what you're doing, but actually um, be inspired to do something in, in a similar vein themselves. So thank you oh. so much. Joining you us. are so welcome. Thank you. And Kyle, thank you both um, for enabling me to come spend some time. And thank you all digital disciples, digital missionaries. <laughs> Tell me which one it is. <laughs> it's both. I mean, what, you can't be one without the other, really. That's so. right. And look, I mean, let's not forget, I, not that I prayed this prayer, but let's not forget um, First Chronicles 4, 9 and 10. Is it the prayer of Jabez, you know, to Lord enlarge my territory. And when you, you know when you are doing this for the right reason and when your heart is for people and their eternal well-being, God will enlarge your territory as you seek to really, um, you know, reach people for Jesus. He will, he will enlarge your territory, whatever it is that you are planning to do for him. All right, Sandra, well, you may not see me tomorrow night, but I feel as though I will be <laughs> tuning in and seeing you. Thank you so much. Um, you all the so best, welcome. sleep well, and enjoy your last day of work, if that's what you're in for tomorrow. I'm still at work. Um, yeah, yeah, forgive me. I'm just, just hanging out at work because the internet's better here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Shall sure. we have a prayer together before we... Yeah, absolutely. Sounds, sounds good. Lead us in prayer, Sandra. Shall do. Father in heaven, thank you so much, Lord, for the internet for good quality internet here at my workspace. And um, just am asking a special blessing, Lord, for each one of these dear people who have Zoomed in for this session. They are the ones who are intentional about reaching others for you. And um, I feel honored to have just been able to spend an hour with them and sharing how it's been for me um, in my situation. And I really pray a blessing, Lord, on each one of them as they reach out to 
the people in their networks, um, on social media, or wherever it is that they are connecting people with you, please go before them. Send your Holy Spirit um, ahead of them and ahead of their plans to really prepare the soil of the hearts of the people they'll engage with. And I ask, Lord, that when we get to heaven, that they each will see people in the kingdom because of their willingness to be used by you. I know this stuff takes time. They could be doing other stuff, and yet they choose to engage in activities that will really benefit other people and draw them into a relationship with you. And so I pray that there will be results and um, lives saved in the kingdom. For those of us going to bed, please give us a good night's rest. And for those of us heading off into our day, um, look after and watch over each one of them, Lord. And may we remember that we are um, here for a purpose. Our mission, our place in Earth's history, what we are supposed to be doing right now is sharing you, your love, the three angels' message in whatever way we can. And so I ask a rich blessing on each one of us is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, I feel, I feel really personally refilled by that prayer as well as the conversation that we've had. So thank you so much. Thank you. You are so welcome. Blessings to you all. Thank you yes. so much for having me over. All right. I mean, next week, guys, we're not too sure exactly who's going to be in, but um, it's definitely not going to be a doozy. So um, all the best and happy Sabbath for tomorrow. I'm kind of already keen for Sabbath, so you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you later, Sandra.